Um, there is a form with this activity if you'd like to interact with us in a new tab. It is the cc dot page forward slash M O one. So standing for Monday and one. We encourage you to open up that form in a new tab for these questions and then throughout our graphic design. Keep that form up so that we can interact with you. So again in a new tab. Um, the cc dot page forward slash M O one. So this is becoming an artist. We are doing some geometric art with PowerPoint today. <coughs> Excuse me. If you'd like to interact with us and do these questions or even get a shout out, uh, make sure in a new tab the cc dot page forward slash M O one. Um, Mari, do you think we're ready for question number one? I think we're ready for question number one. OK, let's do it. And these all are little hints for today. So question number one, responding in that form are what are the three primary colors? So a lot of you I know might be middle school students. Uh, we could have any grades joining us today. Sometimes in your art classes, they have you start with the color wheel and exploring. And what I love about these primary colors is you can mix them to pretty much create every other color. So we're looking for the three primary colors. You're welcome just to share one or two or even just guess, um, but let us know in the form and Mari's going to start giving some shout outs to the people that are joining us today. Uh, Mari, do we have have students done any guesses? Have any responses come in? I don't see any yet. We do have <clears throat> three classes that have joined us already, so welcome to you all. Um, teachers, there are, um, the, I put the link to the form also in the Q&A if you need to reference it. Ooh, we have our first one. Shout out to Oscar. Oscar says red, blue, and yellow. Emma, is that right? That is, that is Oscar. Great job. Great job with the three primary colors. Um, let's dive into question number two, but keep those responses coming out. Even if you are responding to other trivial questions, we'll still be able to give you a shout out. So that is correct. It is red, blue, and yellow. And through these three colors, we are able to mix and blend and come up with a whole wide range of colors. Question number two, and this one's a bit of a tricky one. There's also more than one answer, but what emotion or mo emotions does the color blue convey? So sometimes like with yellow that might convey like happiness or you know of course the sunshine but yellow is kind of associated with happiness um, and red could be connected to like an anger but what emotion what what might blue convey and again this is a little trickier one um, but we'd love to hear from you in the form. What color do you think a blue conveys? And for all of you just joining us, that link is at the bottom of this slide too, so you can post your answer. The cc dot page slash m o one. And also teachers just joining, we are officially kickstarting the graphic design in the top of the hour. So in about five minutes, uh, we'll be kickstarting. If you're early, we're just doing some fun trivia, get to know who's joining us. We can do some shout outs. Um, so use that form to interact. Um, if you want to even just mute us until the top of the hour, that's fine too. But we are just providing some ways to interact uh, before we go. Mari, any guesses for the color blue? We sure do. So Ryan guessed calmness and Oscar said sad, but is there more? Those are great guesses. Those are really good guesses. So it can be a few things, but calmness, serenity, wisdom, um, it's kind of that like peaceful, like if you said peaceful, that would also be correct. It's just kind of that like 
I like to think as blue is like that mindfulness moment, like just taking it back, um, time to think, um, rejuvenate, that kind of thing. So blue, kind of a tricky one, but interesting nonetheless. Let's move on to question number three. And sorry, my graphics a little. What is one complementary color to purple? And if you're not quite sure what complementary means, it means a color of like significant contrast. So if I wanted two colors on a graphic design to really stand out next to each other, um, I would choose, and they tend to be quite far away on the color spectrum. So what might be a complementary color to purple? And uh, I'm of course a big fan of purple, but there are a couple colors that are specifically complementary to purple. Let us know in the form, the cc dot page forward slash M01. Nothing coming through yet, Emma. Welcome to our classes mm -hmm. who have just joined us. We're just doing a little trivia to get started. Um, but make sure you're answering in the cc.page slash M01. That's where you can find all these trivia answers. Fabulous. So we are looking for a complimentary colored purple, a, co a color that when you put it next to purple, it would just pop. They'd really stand out. Um, there would be some significant contrast. Awesome. We got one guest coming or two guesses coming through. Elisa says blue. Oscar says yellow. Anyone Ooh. else have any guesses? And those are both really good guesses. One of them is correct, actually. But like I said, there are a color, co couple colors that are complementary. And I think we'll go over the answer so we can get in maybe a one more trivia question before we start. Um, but these are the three main ones. So yellow, green, and orange are complementary colors that contrast each other. I personally love putting purples and greens together. I think they look beautiful in graphic designs. Question number four. What color do you get when you mix red and blue? Let us know in that form if we are going back to those primary colors and mixing them. If our paintbrush dabbed into both red and blue, what might we get? Let us know in that form what you think. And for teachers, don't worry, we are kickstarting the graphic design in one minute. Um, so you can be getting your students ready. I'm sure a lot of them are on devices if they're already doing the trivia. <clears throat> and make sure to leave that form up um, in a new tab when we start designing so that we can always help uh, troubleshoot and we can continue to interact with you. Mari, do we have any uh, guesses as to what color we get when we mix red and blue? We sure do. We have quite a few coming through. Um, Kaylee said purple and yellow. Um, Gavin, Oscar both said purple. Jessica said purple and green, and then a whole smattering of people. Shout out to Brooke, Jeffrey, Elisa, Connor, Ashley, and Campbell. Thank you all for participating and guessing purple. Well, I love it and great answers. It sounds like we're like pretty much ready to go. We're warmed up. It is purple. When you mix red and blue, you get purple. And I know we saw some purple and yellow, and I know that's probably your response to the complimentary colors. We just love it when you participate and we can't wait to kickstart this graphic design. So Mari, do you think we're ready? I am so ready. This is so exciting. All right, so we are switching gears here. I'm just gonna switch my screen. Uh, we are now at the top of the hour, um, so we are going to jump in. Um, first of all, Mari, do you wanna say hi? Sure. Hey everyone, my name is Mari. I am in the background making sure everything is running. Um, I am a middle school science teacher in San Diego, California. Um, so great to be with you all. Teachers, if you need anything, drop it in the Q&A and I can help you out. 
Um, otherwise, I'm so looking forward to this session. All right, thank you so much, Mari, and thanks for supporting this session. So teachers, again, you are at Become an Artist with Geometric Art. Um, you will be getting the official link on the schedule, so not to worry. Uh, but if you are wanting to pull this up on um, your screen or just save it, it is the cc.page forward slash geometric art. And in that resource link, you will see step by step instructions for this um, so that it can always be shared with students um, at a later date. So we just heard from Mari. Mari's behind the scenes helping us out. My name is Emma Cotier. I am from Victoria, British Columbia. We're both on the taint. We're we call it like we're kind of the West Coasters. We're both on the taint. Same time zone. It's early here. It's 630. I am also a middle school teacher. Um, I teach all subject areas, but I'm quite passionate about creativity um, with tech. So there's your team today. Um, let's keep her going. I do want to um, do a land acknowledgement. It's very likely you are participating and learning from or near the traditional territory land of one of the many indigenous groups across Canada. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm presenting from the traditional t territory of the local West Saanich people. It's just a beautiful coastal te territory uh, where I'm able to teach, learn, explore, and share my passion of technology. So I am located on the south end of Vancouver Island of the Coast Salish people, and just thank you and acknowledging that I am a guest on your land today. Um, a shout out to Cobblestone Collective. Without them, we would not be able to provide these sessions for students across Canada. So thank you. And of course, a thank you to Microsoft as well for supporting this session. Um, let us know quickly in the form. So if you are just joining in, we do have a form that you can interact with us. It is the cc.page for slash M01. We'd love to know what grade you're in. So let us know. We love to know um, kind of the age of our audience. Um, and then we're going to jump into that graphic design. So we could have any grades. So the form is the CC dot page for slash M01. Again, you can use that link throughout this session if you need help troubleshooting. If you want to show us, uh, or sorry, if you'd like us to show you uh, to demonstrate anything again from the graphic design, or if you have any questions, um, you can always um, get in touch with that through the form. Mari, any grades coming in? I'd love to know, um, get to know some of these students. Sure do. We got some grade six and grade five so far. Fabulous, great grades. 14 classes joining us, Emma. This is so awesome. That is so awesome. Well, thank you. And Mari, keep us posted if we get any other grades, but let's carry on because I know it's so fun to dive in and start designing. Um, so today's plan, we are going to play create and design. Uh, we're going to explore some graphic design features of PowerPoint, and we are going to create a visual masterpiece inspired by the incredible and talented Elise Dodge, who is a Canadian. Um, and of course, our inspiration is Elise Thosh, and we want to give her a big thank you. We have been so lucky here at Cobblestone Collective to make contact with her, and um, she has given us our full support, her full support um, to be doing these graphics. You are more than welcome to connect with her on different social media platforms, but thank you, Elise Dodge, um, for supporting your art in classrooms. Um, if you are not familiar with Elise Thaw, she was raised in British Columbia, my home province, and creates contemporary landscapes with geometric shapes. She, Elise Dodge, reimagines the country's majestic landscapes as tiny geometric shapes coming together to create the whole. So she actually travels around and she takes beautiful pictures with her camera and then she then recreates them with geometric shapes and they are absolutely brilliant. A couple more pieces of her work just to get familiar with it. And Another one, so your goal today is to create your own geometric landscape using uh, Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, we are now going to get started. Just to preface for today, we are going to be using um, 
the web-based version. And to get to the web-based version of Microsoft PowerPoint is simply going to office.com in a new tab. So teachers, this is a great um, way and reminder with these sessions, you can play, you can pause, you can remind, uh, rewind. This might be a great time to just pause with your students, do a quick login check uh, and make sure that everyone is able to access www.office.com. I'm going to be using the web based version, but if you um, if your class is using the desktop version, that is just fine to um, you will definitely be able to access all the same features and, and more on the desktop. So to again to access office.com and then all depending on your setup, mine are all located along the left hand side here and PowerPoint is the kind of orange ready one on the left hand side. And if you open it up and we'll just be creating a new blank presentation. So office.com new blank presentation. It is going to look something like this. So Mari, maybe while people are loading, maybe we can, do we have any more shout outs we can give? Yeah, we do. I was just gonna tell you that there are a few grade threes popping in as well. Oh, that's lovely. I know. I love, I love all different grades because geometric art and I mean, we all do geometry and we all learn shapes and we all can combine them to create a beautiful masterpiece. Um, so I'm going to show that step one more time of how I got here just in case is a new tab office.com. We are launching PowerPoint. Mine are on the side here. I'm launching PowerPoint. I am selecting a new presentation. We are not selecting any themes or fanciness. Uh, we know PowerPoint has lots of built in themes, but we're going to be creating our own masterpiece today. Um, so don't um, please don't select a theme or a setup. We just want a fresh. I'm going to call it the fresh canvas. Uh, we don't want any of those on the side today, so we're going to exit them out. While you're waiting, you may also um, delete. Go ahead and delete the text. You can also through the layout here. Just go ahead and select a blank layout. We like I said, we want a fresh canvas. No text, no themes, fresh canvas. And I won't be referring back or I won't be showing this again on the screen too much, but teachers, I do want to remind you in the resource, the CC dot page forward slash geometric art. This will also be linked to your schedule with the, the link that you got for this, but there is the step by step instructions um, for this and as well as examples in there. But we are going to just start designing because we want to maximize our time today. Mari, do you think all our students are ready? I think they're ready. I think they're totally ready. Um, we are going to start with the background color. All right, so um, a couple ways of doing so we have done the blank layout. We are now um, and just to going over a couple things and teachers. Sorry, I just want to remind you one more time um, that you are. Um, we went to office.com and we open it up and the step by step instructions are in the slides and now we're going to start designing. We are going to go over to the design tab. So that's the fifth one over the design tab and we're going to go ahead and choose a background color. And I should just show you um, if so just coming back here. I'm going to go back to Lisa's design. So the background color um, we are going to be recreating this one just so you know. Um, this is our inspiration for today. This is actually um, a depiction of the Cleveland Dam and go ahead and choose a background color. So I am going to choose. I think I'm going to go with the blue gray. So go ahead and choose a background color. So that was under design. We clicked on background 
and go ahead and select any one that you would like. I went with um, the blue gray uh, for my background. Awesome. Uh, in the form, you are welcome to let us know some background colors you've chosen. Uh, we will be uh, interacting with that form um, again in just a couple minutes. And teachers, remember you have the step by step instructions um, in that uh, in the link that we shared with you. It's dot cc dot page forward slash geometric art. Uh, next step, so we have done the background color that was under design. We hit background and we chose any color. Students, I want to remind you that this is your painting today. You can choose any colors that you'd like. Um, have some fun with it. You don't have to do the blue gray like me. You could choose the yellows or greens or gray or any of the kind of the standard colors at the bottom. Have some fun with it. It is your drawing. We are now going to go to the insert menu. So that's the third one over insert menu and we are going to insert a rectangular shape. We are going to be creating the horizon of our painting. So we're going to go ahead and insert a rectangle. When it drops on your page, it's going to be a perfect little square in the middle. So we're going to drag it. Um, you'll notice that if you're in the middle, you're going to see a cursor and you're not going to be able to drag it if it's on cursor. And what that is, is when you insert shapes in PowerPoint, you can actually type in them. We're not going to type in them today. We are going to move our cursor so that we see the one with the four white arrows and we're going to drag that rectangle down to the corner. And we're going to use the top right hand corner and we're going to stretch it out so that it's about you know give or take up if we're talking math here we're going to end geometric shapes we are going to say about one third of your page so just recapping uh, for those students we have changed the background color we have used that insert menu to insert a rectangle that covers about the bottom third of your page. Don't worry about it being exact. We're just having fun and we are just creating. And you're gonna go ahead and change the color of that shape. You might see this pop-up menu come up, but you can also click on shape um, to adjust your color as well. So go ahead and choose a different color. This is going to be for your ocean. So I'm going to choose a contrasting color um, just so that you can see the rectangle that I have created. Mari, how are our students doing? I think they're really exciting, excited. I see a lot of exclamation marks with the colors they chose. Quite a few blues, a couple greens and a black. So Ooh, like it's going really bright. well. Could, and you know, you could certainly, if you're really into black and white, do shades of gray um, for your design. And maybe I'll show the original again. It is Elise Dodges. This is the inspiration for today. Um, this is actually the Cleveland Dam. Uh, but we are going to be creating a geometric kind of landscape, the mountain range. And then we're going to be using some cool features of PowerPoint um, to get kind of the tree line in there. So this is our inspiration. Uh, for today. All right, so we have a background color. We have um, our ocean like we inserted the rectangle. That's we're going to call that her the horizon line. Now we need to start working with our geometric shapes and this is what is going to totally bring your masterpiece to real life. We're going to go back to that insert menu. Third one over insert menu. We're going to go down to shapes and you are going to click or select a triangle. The one I'd like you to use today is called the isosceles triangle. Little math connection today. Isosceles triangles have two equal sides and two equal angles because we actually have three kinds of triangles. We have scaling, no equal sides and equal angles. We have this isosceles and we have equilateral, which is three equal sides and equal angles. So third one over, we're going to go with that isosceles triangle. Um, click on it, it will insert directly onto your page. So insert menu. 
we went to shapes and we chose the isosceles triangle um, located under basic shapes. So isosceles triangle. Now, once that triangle is inserted, you can adjust it. Like you can drag from the top, you can drag from the side. Your isosceles triangles don't all have to look the same. You also have the full creative ring to adjust the color. So maybe you like that blue, you can keep the blue. Or under shape or by right clicking, you can adjust the color. So I personally love yellows on blues. I'm going to even go a darker yellow, I think, a really vibrant yellow. If you do not want, see how your shape has that kind of outline color on it? If you do not want that border outline, you just want it to be yellow, go back to shape and right next to the fill color is your outline color and you could simply just choose no outline. So it's up to you. Again, that was under shape and you will probably see, see here, I can't see that shape function. Make sure your triangle is selected in order to get that shape function. And you'll have your fill color and next door is your outline color. So go ahead, I'm gonna give you about 10 seconds. Make sure to insert, uh, we went to the insert menu. We dropped in an isosceles triangle and we colored it because I need to make sure you're ready because the next step is where the magic is going to happen. All right, students. This is where we are going to get that. We're just going to bring that geometric landscape to life. I need to tell you about a really cool tool. And that, depending on your device, is Control D. Control D duplicates your shapes. It is magic. Again, Control D. If people are working on Macs, it is a Command D. Um, and if you are working on an iPad, it might be a matter of holding down the shape, but Control D will duplicate it. And you can move that triangle up, go back to shapes, and you can simply recolor it. So maybe I'm now going to choose, maybe I'm going to choose a green and I can duplicate again. But watch this. See on the top of my shape, there is that kind of rotation tool, I can turn my triangle around. And if I make it so it says 180 degrees, I know that it is directly upside down. And PowerPoint, see those red grid lines that come up? That ensures that I have lined up things perfectly with no spaces in between. So I'm going to go back to shape. I'm going to color this in. I might choose a purple actually. So I have already a few triangles. Control D, duplicate, and you can work on lining them up. So you can see really quickly how your landscape will come to life. And maybe I'm gonna choose a blue color for that triangle. So I already have four triangles in there and you are gonna keep duplicating uh, you're going to keep it duplicating those triangles. So if you want, if you're ready in the form, you can let us know maybe three colors you have included in your geometric art. And if you need help or your teacher would like us to demonstrate anything to you, again, um, a reminder that you can use that form uh, to check in with us, the CC dot page forward slash M O one. And we're going to be giving you some time in just a minute to create. I will be creating at the same time. Um, but let us know in that form any colors that you have used, three colors you have used for your geometric painting. Emma, Brooke is using blue, orange, and yellow. 
I think Ooh, that's a really cool color combination. That is going to look amazing. And thank you for sharing. Ooh, and Marika is using different shades of purple. So dark purple, lighter purple, and another lighter purple. I bet that's and using cool too. Shades, I love how you mentioned that because shades can create a beautiful outcome as well. And this is your masterpiece. Like we've said, use any combination of colors. You can make your triangles any shape that you'd like. A lot of you probably even saw in the shape menu that there's lots of cool geometric things that you can add. And we will be showing you those a little later in this presentation. So right now, we are going to give you about a 10 minute creation break. Uh, Mari's probably gonna mute me, which is fine, but she'll interrupt me if there's some questions. I will be designing uh, my geometric landscape on the screen, but we want to just give you a little bit of creative time without us interrupting you where you can design. So I just wanna remind you um, before we pause for a little creativity break, you're hitting control D to duplicate. Whoops, um, that one I didn't actually, but I'll do it here. Control D will duplicate and be moving those shapes around, be creating, explore colors, explore sizes of your triangles, and we'll check back within you shortly. Hey, Emma, real quick. Um, what was it again on an iPad to duplicate? Oh, you know what? I have to confess, I don't really use PowerPoint a lot on my iPad. My guess is maybe holding the shape down um, for a pop-up menu. But if some of you are designing on an iPad and you've discovered a magical trick, let us know in the form so that we can share it with others. That was my guess too, is click and hold and a menu will pop up. Yeah, give us a go. Um, if you are, you know, well versed in PowerPoint, I do want to just point out at the bottom there's more fill colors. You can also do some creative blending. Um, this is more of a ninja level, um, but you can also create because um, I want to get kind of a cool pink one in the mix under and that was at the bottom under more colors feel free to even make some custom colors as well. That's ninja level though. You don't have to go there if you don't want to, but you do have the power to do that. So you have a 10 minute creativity break. Mari, you're gonna let me know if there's any questions. And if you just want to watch on the screen as I am creating, you are welcome to do so.
Hey, Emma, as you're working, there's a question that came through from Rebecca about how do you move the shapes all together? So could you show that one more time? You know what? Yours I love, so cool. I love how students are on to me. And I was wondering when I was doing that, I was like, you know what? I bet you a student's going to wonder how I can magically create and move all these rectangles um, together. So I'm going to give you a little trick um, because in any graphic design thing, there is ways to kind of duplicate um, bigger volumes of things. So what I did, and I'm going to do it on this big kind of bigger triangle mountain range on my thing is on my keyboard. I held down the shift control. So it's on the left hand side. I held down shift with my left hand and I clicked on the outline of the shape. So you can see the dotted lines pop up and I click on all the shapes that I wanted. So in this case, the entire mountain. Sometimes it is really challenging to make sure you have all of them. Then I hit Control C to copy and Control V to paste. And then you could see now I have a duplicate. You can see that I missed the one triangle in the middle, um, but that's how you do it. You hold down shift on your keyboard and then you use your cursor um, to click on the individual objects. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Um, that's my little trick for you there. Um, but don't worry, sometimes you do accidentally miss um, a triangle and you can always just go back like I did here and the Control D to duplicate one that you want and place it back in. That was such a good question. Um, Mari, has any other questions come through on the form before we carry on? Nothing yet, but I got to tell you, I really love how yours is turning out with the different colors. And I love that you use different shapes, or not different shapes, different sizes of triangles too. Yeah, and just have some fun. Yours. And with my ones on the right hand side, I'm actually sharing a triangle in a way. Like I've started creating it off of there. You can create your landscape any way that you'd like. Um, and I hope you have some fun um, creating. So at this point, we are going to come up with some additional ways to kind of add features um, to our painting. So again, just hitting Control D to duplicate, adding triangles. Um, if we had more time, I mean, we could spend hours creating and, and, and doing different triangles. Because if we go back to Elise's artwork, and maybe uh, just zooming in there, you can see that she has all different sizes and styles and colors of triangles. They're not just isosceles triangles, they're scalings and they're equilaterals and they're all over. Uh, we just have the time constraints. So we've gone with one particular triangle, but given more time, you could do others. Also a little um, kind of design tip for you. You, if you look closely in Elisa's work, you will see the triangles that are closer to you are darker and the triangles that are further away from you that are a lighter color. Um, so if you're looking to challenge yourself and you want to keep working on this painting after this session ends, that's something that you could explore with too, is making triangles that are closer to you darker and further away ones lighter. So that's just a little tip for you um, for designing. My mountain range is pretty much, um, I would say, all at the same location <laughs> uh, in, in the horizon. Um, Mari, what about you? Should we show the students how we can add some really cool finishing features on our paintings? Yes, I do. I have one question or a couple questions that came through. Um, one from Chase and Chase asked, uh, how do you rotate a lot of triangles? So does that same process where you shift click everything yeah, and then you absolutely. can rotate everything? Let me just show you that again because it is a really cool tool. So on my keyboard, if I hold down shift, and I highlight multiple objects. So say I'm gonna do, I have those three in the middle highlighted. 
I can't, or actually, I don't know if he can rotate together. Let's give this a try. So control C to paste, control V. Um, it's pasted them, but I think under shape, I'm gonna have, there is maybe a way to rotate. Let's also try the right click. Sometimes they're, oh, I wonder in, I'm just gonna, that's a really good question. I might just have to explore. Hmm, interesting. Um, let me sit on that question because you might just have to rotate individually for the time being. That is a really good question. Because under, we also do have rotation. We can rotate there. Really good question. We're going to get back to you on that. Um, there is also, I should just mention, under the shape is the arrange. And there is rotate 90s under there as well. I wonder if that would work. If it will let us, if I highlight a few shapes again. And we go to arrange. Ah, that's how you could do it. So if you highlight a few, um, you'll probably just have to rotate 90 at a time, but that's fine because you just rotate 90 once and then rotate 90 twice and it's going to flip it upside down. That would work. That's a little bit of a of a cheat there. Really good question. Mari, did we have another question? Let's see. Um, that was, there was a question. Can you do shapes with a text slide? And I'm, I'm not sure if this person means, can you include text in your shapes or? Yeah, you can. Um, if you wanted to add text in your shape, you certainly could. Um, if you click right in the middle, um, I accidentally, sorry, right click, I'm on a ThinkPad. If you click right in the middle of the shape, you will be able to add some text. Um, you could certainly tie in like your initials in one of the shapes. I think that would look really cool. Uh, but you do have the option to add text uh, in a shape if you'd like. All right, let's move on to some finishing touches. We want to make sure that all our students get time to finish their painting or at least come close to it. And I want to show you a, another really cool feature of Microsoft PowerPoint. We're going to go back up to that insert menu. But instead of shapes, we're going to navigate over to pictures. So insert pictures. And from here, we have a few options. We have from this device, from OneDrive, from stock images, and from Bing, Bing pictures. And that's kind of like a, a web search there. We are going down to the third one, which is stock images. So insert pictures, stock images. Microsoft PowerPoint has lots of different options in here. There's images, and I'm sure students use those a lot. The other benefit of using this, if you search directly in Microsoft PowerPoint, you don't have to worry about copyright. They are all creative licensed. Um, so just know that they're all safe to use when you search directly in PowerPoint. We have icons, which are really cool things. We're not gonna use them for this painting. There's people and there's stickers, but we're gonna go over to the fifth category, the last one, which is called illustrations. And through illustrations, we are going to be able to add some really neat things. And this is where you can really add some creative flair. There is also categories. And I should tell you that every time you load it up, the categories are probably going to be in a different location. You can also search. So I am just going to search for a tree. And there is a few different things that come up. <laughs> you'll notice that you'll have a tree with snow and a tree without snow. So I am going to choose the one without snow because um, I'm thinking mine is more a spring summer season, but if you want to go with snow, that's just fine. So I'm going to use this tree and I'm going to go ahead and insert it. From there, you are able to size it and color it just like we were doing with the triangles. 
So I am going to go, um, if I click on graphics, I can change the color. So I think I'm going to choose um, some different shades of gray. A little graphic design tip for you as well. If you are doing a tree line, if you alter the shades um, of them, it will give you a really nice effect. So I'm using that control D to duplicate again, just like I did with my triangles. And now I am creating um, that tree line. So that was one way and students are probably wondering how Emma, how did you get those trees on there? Insert pictures, uh, stock images, and then we went over to illustrations and it falls under the nature category. So you can click on nature and you'll be able to get it as well. And I chose this one without the snow. So remember you have the one kind of with snow here and the one without. Just simply click insert and you have it in your design. So you can be playing around. You can adjust the proportions. If you click on graphics, you will be able to adjust the color of it. Um, so and hitting control D to duplicate and adding in that tree line. Now you don't have to stick with the tree shape. If you are inspired by something else under that menu, you are welcome to add that as well. You do not have to stick with the same shapes um, that I am creating. And I'm just going to take you back to the original Elise painting. Um, you can see that she has a tree line coming in from both sides, kind of slanting down towards the middle. Um, if you're wanting to follow that inspiration of the original painting, um, she even has some reds and light greens and dark greens and almost some black colors in there. Um, you can make that tree line however you wish. I'm going to control D duplicate, make some trees in there. I am choosing to do different shades of um, kind of the different hues of black and gray. Um, but a lot of fun. What I'm, I'm going to show you some other little features that you can add as well. Um, in if we go back to that shape menu, so insert shapes, um, you can see that there is some really neat things as well. You could certainly be adding some clouds. Um, you could do some moon. Um, you could do through the insert shape feature as well. Or going back to the insert pictures, stock images, illustrations, um, if you search, I think it's shapes. If we search shapes, we can add some really neat textures on here. And I believe there's one that looks like a cloud as well. So there is. So I've just searched shapes in there. I'm going to choose this one for my cloud. And it's going to pop up. And I'm going to show you another really cool graphic design trip. It's just loading. Sometimes that happens. So here is a cloud shape, but you'll notice it's on top of my triangles and maybe I don't want it that way. Graphic design is done in layers. So if you ever add something and you don't want it there, you want to tuck it in behind a shape, right click send to back. So right click, send it back. You can see that that cloud is now tucked behind. So I'm going to show you that again. Control D to duplicate. I got the cloud. I want to put it in the foreground. So behind or in the sorry, in the background behind my um, geometric landscape. I'm going to right click, send to back. So Mari, let's, how about we give the students right now, we'll give them about five minutes to create, um, adding those shapes in, whoops, I didn't quite send that to the back. So right click, send to back. Um, I have tucked that cloud in behind. You will see me creating, adding those shapes. All the shapes I will be using is insert, pictures, stock images, 
and illustrations. So just looking through there, again, if you want textures, just hit shape. I am going to create um, for the next five minutes while you have time to explore those tools. Uh, if you can, if we can help, uh, just let us know uh, in through that form and we'll check back with you shortly. Emma, there is a question from a couple different artists here asking yeah. um, if we can use other shapes other than triangles. So is it OK to use circles or oh, rectangles in this absolutely. too? Absolutely. This is geometric art. So any shape that you want to include, um, you have full creative range. So go ahead. Any shapes are just fine with geometric art.
So students, I hope you've had at least a little bit of time to design and create. Um, on my painting, you can see that I've added a few things. Through the shape tool of PowerPoint, I've added a sunshine. I kind of have my tree line on both sides and I've used um, that shape tool or sorry, through the insert pictures, stock images just under shape here or sorry, under illustrations and then shape. I was able to add some texture so you can see here I've used this one here and I've added some texture to my ocean. You can also see that under there I searched nature and I was able to add a dragonfly. So at this time, while you're creating, we would love to know in the form, maybe some of the features or details um, that you were at, able to add to your painting. Uh, we can even give some shout outs in the time. So in the form, let us know something that you were able to add. So I'm going to add one more thing maybe to show you. So pictures, stock images. I'm going to search nature. Oh, sorry, under illustrations again. Um, I'm going to search nature and let's maybe add one more feature. So that was the dragonfly that I added. And you can just search through for different things that might fit. Um, this might actually be really neat as well to add to your tree line. It's not quite a tree, but adding different shapes in the tree line um, could give a really neat effect as well. So I actually really like it with that yellow, but I'm going to blend it in with gray, maybe a bluey gray. Let's see, maybe I'll do that color. Oh, I like that. So I've just gone ahead and inserted some other nature and I'm hitting that control D to control D um, to layer it and place it on both sides. So Mari, have any students shared some of the things that they added today? They sure have. Um, I'm seeing Bryce added in road, car, and a bus. Lily added in a monkey and Kaylee added in popcorn. Popcorn? I bet you, that popcorn. I I know, I bet you that's it. such a cool texture. And I also Rebecca has a really important question. Does it save automatically? Oh, that is the million dollar question. Yes, it was, especially if you're using the web-based version, you don't have to worry about saving. Um, it might be a good idea to, <laughs> at this time, do your file name. In my classroom, I always have my students do the first name first, and then um, we can go, call it geometric art. So why don't, when we're talking about saving, we go ahead up here. Um, you can see that it's saved up there as well, but go ahead and title your document there. I do also want to tell you about one other cool thing that you can do with PowerPoint is whenever you've done a creative masterpiece um, such as this one is you can file um, and you can save as but you can actually download them. You can print them. I'm going to click save as and you can actually download it as an image. So I went file, save as. You can download a copy to your computer. If you're on a school device, it's probably not a good idea to do that, but you can download it as a JPEG. And once it's downloaded as a JPEG, so I'm gonna do that here. Um, I'm on a ThinkPad, so you can see that it's gonna download right here for me. Um, so now when it's downloaded as a JPEG, you can use it in any other application of Microsoft. It could be even sent to a store for printing. Um, lots of things that you can do with it as well. Um, sometimes I'll send them to a store and print it as like a four by six or a five by seven. Lots of options. So you do in PowerPoint when you're done a design, you can just go file, save as, and then download as an image that saves it as a JPEG, which is kind of that that traditional or the proper uh, picture file. And from there, 
you can use it in anything. So you could use PowerPoint to um, bring your stories to life, to illustrate stories. Um, once it's downloaded as a JPEG, you could put it in Microsoft Word and then do your writing underneath. You have a lot of options uh, with that. So that's a really good question. Uh, Maury, just before we finish off, is there any other questions I can answer? No other questions, but I'm seeing a lot of really cool uh, add-ins. So um, a lot of people are mentioning animals or flowers, planets. Uh, Megan oh. added a bird with rocks. I think that's so cool. That is so cool. And I, you know, I wish I could kind of teleport into your different classrooms and see all the different combinations of your geometric art. I hope you had so much fun designing and creating today. We are bringing this lesson to a close. Um, your teacher, of course, will have your next steps for instruction. So stay tuned to them. Um, Thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining Mari and I today for this geometric art. We'd love to finish off with one more question with what did you like best? So using that form, what did you like best about the geometric art today? Um, we have just loved your patience, your willingness to try new tools um, and just your ability to design and create and share your thoughts with us in the form today. So thank you, thank you. We are um, going to be here for a few more minutes. Uh, we'd love to finish off with just what you'd like today. So Mari, can we give a few more shout outs? Sure thing. Um, first, I got to tell you, Emma, this is so cool. Like my brain is swimming with ideas of ways that we could use this. And I was thinking, you know, as you're showing your scenery, your scenery doesn't look like the scenery where I live. And so thinking about as a science teacher, like showing different biomes and different mm -hmm. ecosystems with this and combining art. So super cool. Brooke says uh, the shapes, I think they're pretty cool. Um, some thank yous coming through. Uh, Corey added a campfire. Ooh, that sounds toasty. <laughs> I wonder if there's s'mores added to that too. Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> um, maybe in teachers, we'll just let you know that um, if you do feel like connecting and sharing your artwork with the artist, Elise uh, Dodge, she is very receptive to that. She can be found on a couple of different social media platforms, but she's very receptive. Um, she loves her art, of course, being used in classrooms and exploring geometric shapes. And teachers, we all know there's great geometrical learning that can happen after exploring art and you know certainly area and perimeter and surface area lots of different connections um, that we can leap from with this design um, so we're just looking in the form if you can finish off one thing that you like from today's session and we just thank you again for joining today um, we will be coming to a close in two minutes um, if you have any further questions now is the time to ask them in the forum before we leave you today awesome um there was one awesome uh shout out from Ashton and Ashton says uh, their shout out was that I could use shapes and other stuff to make my own world. I love that. I love that as well. Love, love, love. I love student creativity. I love that even though we're getting inspiration from the same source that every painting is going to look so different. And remember, you can file save as you can download it as a jpeg and then it can be used in anything else microsoft powerpoint it can be printed it can be shared to your local printing paste for printing as well you have lots of different options i love uh, personally printing these off and putting them on my classroom wall um, because it makes me so happy seeing all the different student designs that's awesome Hey, we got a shout out from Mr. Ryan also. Mr. Ryan says, thank you so much. This was so cool. Oh, thank you, Mr. Ryan, and thank you for joining. That's such a nice way to end off our session. Um, so we are now bringing it to a close. A final thank you for joining us today with this geometric art. 
Teachers, remember that you can access this slide deck, this resource on your schedule or at the CC dot page forward slash geometric art. You can save it and use it uh, for years to come. It all has the step by step instructions for you on creating a beautiful geometric landscape. So thank you everyone and thanks for joining.